And my first guest is very fascinating. Her name is Valerie Lumley. She's a classically trained singer, soprano, and she wrote a book called Curing Chronic Fibromyalgia. Sounds pretty amazing. We're gonna find out about that. Welcome to the program. Thank you, it's wonderful to be here. Nice to have you here. So start off by talking to the viewers of your progression with fibromyalgia. You know, okay, well, kind of the, the onset and, and sure, how bad it got. Sure. Well, it, it was triggered by doing an at-home simple exercise, ironically, to strengthen my diaphragm for singing. And I did a crunch, which is where you are on the floor and you're bringing your knees up and you're trying to bring your elbow into each knee and do this. But I pulled mm. my atlas. I pulled on my head, which you're not supposed to do ever. Yeah. And it had been um, previously injured. 35 years prior in an auto accident, but this was a compounding injury that just popped my atlas out enough to trigger full-blown fibromyalgia. And, and some it, of the viewers, atlas being the very top vertebrae of the spine. Exactly, at the also very known top C1. of the C1, very top yeah. of the spine, right. It's where the brainstem enters through the atlas into and becomes the spinal cord. And when the atlas is subluxated or mis misaligned, <coughs> excuse me, it creates a kink subluxation. Yes, mm -hmm. and then so then you started having symptoms? Yes, um, <coughs> excuse me, I had a symptom that uh, where a pain shot right down my back on the right side, and I couldn't get up, and I knew something was terribly wrong. So um, I ended up going to a doctor and being put on the, re the regimen of pain, kill pain pills, anti-inflammatories, muscle relaxants, and then other down the road other drugs to counteract the terrible side effects of those and sleeping pills and it, the list just went on and on. So you start off healthy, mm -hmm. great shape, uh, you injure your neck, you think it's a neck injury, which looks pretty straightforward, right? and then it's progressively worsening. Right, it took about three years to completely disable me. It just progressively got worse as you said. And I just kept going. I just kept taking the drugs and putting the Band-Aid over the oil light and continuing to drive my car. And you know what happens when you do that. Right. And I went from doctor to doctor trying to get a diagnosis, and uh, I just didn't get one that was anywhere near. And what, what time frame? How long ago was this? Oh, this was uh, 15 years ago. 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because mm -hmm. that was be kind of in the earlier more. stages of the recognition of this. It was the early stages of the recognition of this, and some people think it might be a fad now, fibromyalgia, a trash can terminology that's mm -hmm. being used, but I think that um, the information is catching up to the syndrome or the disorder, and now mm -hmm. people are becoming more aware of it. So um, that uh, didn't help me at the time because I was considered to be more like a psychological case. And I was diagnosed by one doctor as being an hysterical hypochondriac. And because I was doctor shopping, going from doctor to doctor, trying to get uh, an explanation that, uh, that settled with me as to be the correct one, uh, that put me in the category of um, hypochondriasis, which I just considered to be uh, responsible local consumerism. <laughs> <laughs> and I always say to people, you know, use your doctors like you do your CPAs, your lawyers, or any other professional, just simply get their advice, see if it resonates with you, educate yourself and become an expert on your mm. condition, and you can reject it if you want to. Right. So you thought just intuitively that what you were being told was not correct. Right, it wasn't matching my inner guide. Okay. I just knew, and I... How did you first, what was the, f what triggered you to think it was something else going on? Well, I, I knew what triggered it. It was the exercise and that pop that I felt. Mm -hmm. And I drew diagrams, and I took them to all the doctors, and they just dismissed them. And I had little, in fact, my original diagrams are in my book that were dismissed by the doctors. Of and the it, injury. Of, of me injuring, yeah, where I injured my neck, the ramifications where the pain was going down the side, and it was pulling me into a C, and my muscles on the right side were, were popping out my ribs, and I had a foreshortened right leg, and my hip was bad. I had a frozen shoulder. and and overfiring nerves everywhere and all the other symptoms of fibromyalgia that finally completely disable you. And um, so the closest medical doctor diagnosis I got was myofascial pain syndrome, which is actually mm -hmm. simply a symptom. Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to do is create a paradigm shift in the way fibromyalgia is viewed 
as the natural result. It's a symptom itself. It's the natural result of uh, trauma to the neck and atlas and, yeah. the, and the, the brain stem injury that results in the kink subluxation. subluxation so. Right. Yeah. So you managed to stay in the medical model for three years? Yes. And live? <laughs> I got worse. Sorry, that worse. wasn't nice. I know, I know, no. The for medical me. profession almost killed me once. Right. And that's a long story, but it's delineated in my book very clearly. And, and they mean well, and they do pretty well in what I call the body shop, where they can replace organs, fix bones, uh, manage trauma. They manage chronic problems with drugs just to manage symptoms so you can get by but they don't really do much curing when it comes to chronic illness. And you were the point you were at the point of being bedridden? Yes, I was bedridden with pain for two years. It was right after my last production, The Merry Widow. They didn't have a, um, a backup singer. <laughs> no understudy for that production. It was with Monterey mm -hmm. Opera Company. And so I forced myself through that on painkillers and took sleeping pills between productions so I could sleep. And I just exacerbated the condition to a point of where I collapsed. Wow. and was bedridden for two years. So some viewers, I'm sure most viewers, have heard fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. and they probably have a picture or an idea of that it's mainly a pain syndrome. But there's much more to it than oh, that. Oh, yes. So it's can you maybe talk about some of the associated other, symptoms? Right. You well, know, with well, like I was saying, the cause is the brainstem injury that is created by the atlas subluxation. And when the brainstem is injured, the entire central nervous system, which runs every biological system all the way down to your cell matrix, which produces your energy, is, is compromised and it mal your whole body malfunctions because your, hyper, your central nervous system has become hyperactivated, it's become hypersensitized, the nociceptive changes in your nociceptive afferent systems that deliver signals from your skin and your body internally, externally to your brain and back again are all distorted through this, this brainstem injury. The brainstem is the part of the brain that, that um, distributes the signals from the hypothalamus through the brainstem into the central nervous system to regulate your biological systems. So everything goes haywire. So you're having even skin problems, digestive problems, oh, every every respiratory? Uh, respiratory, everything. Or reproductive? You know, too I mean, much earwax, too much salt in your tears, you know, too much plaque in your teeth, too much stomach acid. Everything is too much. And the pain is, is one of the things that is the driving force in disabling people because I felt like I had ground glass through all my muscles. I couldn't activate a muscle and let it relax. It's called a neuromuscular facilitation with the resting potential set too high. And that is when you exert a muscle and then de-exert it, it's supposed to return to relaxation, but it doesn't. When your system is hyperactivated, it stays tight chronically, and your muscles become sludgy. It, they don't get the circulation that needs to deliver nutrients and oxygen and remove toxins, so you become toxic and sludgy and just... When it's exhausting, it, and your it's muscles exhausting. are contracting all the time. Well, your body is an energy deficit. It cannot keep up, um, it cannot produce enough energy to keep up with the ravages of fibromyalgia, the hyper excitation of all your, all your uh, biological sim uh, systems. And so um, you have this terrible paradox of this driving fight or flight syndrome that you feel along with this chronic depression and they just collide and it's just, it's, it's the strangest way to live because it's like a living hell. You don't ever wake up from right. this nightmare and you don't sleep and sleep deprivation becomes a part of it and that has its consequences as well as so does depression. Mm -hmm. depression. Yeah, and unfortunately I, I see a lot of people get the diagnosis that well it's it's depression but I have yet to find somebody that's in chronic pain that is not somewhat depressed. Everybody is. It's miserable yeah, to be in chronic pain. Depression's not a cause, it's, an, it's a symptom. Right. And this is what, where the scientific community doesn't connect the dots. They, they, if you read the current research, you'll see that it does not, not always agree. And I did 10 years of exhaustive research, and I saw this all the time, where, where one study will go this way, the other will go that way, and they'll, they'll end up concluding that a symptom is a cause. And then you get treated for that symptom, and then your body is exacerbated because it's being mistreated. It's not treating the cause. And when you have fibromyalgia, your body is trying to maintain such a delicate balance just to stay alive. Any treatment, especially a mistreatment, will exacerbate your symptoms and make you worse. Yeah. That is, that is brutal. It is. It's terrible. Yeah. I remember years, years ago, I started seeing that 
correlation with patients that came in. But this is before they even had fibromyalgia. Oh, yeah. That when they had this full body pain and there's other symptoms, that there was invariably a traumatic incident to the neck. Right. In all their histories. Down the road. And yeah. all the research says that whiplash, the consequences of whiplash, the, the ultimate consequences of whiplash do not um, become experienced until down the road, maybe mm -hmm. even years and years down the road. Yeah. But right away, the patient doesn't feel those consequences, so they don't get the treatment right away. Yeah. Unless, of course, you know, they've cracked something. Right. But, um, and that, that's very true. When you have compounding injuries over your lifetime, I mean, my ground zero of injuries goes all the way back to my childhood, and they compounded and compounded, and then I had the auto accident and had more injuries, and then finally this last, what I call the last straw injury, right. was the one that uh, broke the proverbial camel's back yeah. <laughs> and triggered the fibromyalgia. Wow. So, This is the Your Health television program. I'm Dr. Rich Westbrook. I'm talking with Valerie Lumley, who is a, the author of Curing Fibromyalgia. And so after this hell on earth you went through yeah. to come out the other end, what got you out of that system? Because it's not easy. No, it isn't. And I, I came across a doctor that said I was the worst case of fibromyalgia they'd ever seen. I won't say any names. And that I would probably should plan my life around being in a nursing home by the time I was 55. And I said to myself, you are so fired. And I remember wearing a little pen to see all my doctors that said never argue with the soprano. And they would say, oh boy, here's another one, you know, <laughs> with my long list of questions right. and the whole bit. Someone who's taking charge, but kind of in an annoying sort of way, they're going to take way right. too much of my time. Well, anyway, um, I just decided that uh, I knew I had to make a decision where I was going to accept the fate uh, that I was being told or believe in my spiritual uh, self, my own knowledge and go deep within and, and uh, Albert Einstein said, which I love, that the only source of true knowledge is experience. And I, I love that. And I think it was Thoreau, Thoreau who wrote, um, do not go where there is a path, but create a trail so that others might follow. Very nice. So, um, so you knew That's what wasn't working. That's kind of the working. way that I, I knew what wasn't working, so I knew I had to leave the medical profession, and it was the scariest thing I've ever done in my life, to go out into the alternative medical world and find a legitimate uh, treatment that could help me. And I, I knew where to start. I knew the top of my neck. And I, I, find, I first went to an osteopath. He referred me to, I asked him to refer me to an upper cervical chiropractor, and I made my way to blessed Dr. Peter Ruiz. Um, Dr. Ruiz is on Cass Street in Monterey, and he has changed my life. He uses the side posture, the side posture um, head drop atlas alignment table, and it was developed originally by B.J. Palmer, and that really got my, turned my life around. It got my atlas holding, and it, everything just started melting away and correcting. And it took a long time, though, because I had to rehabilitate my entire body, not just right. align my neck, but when your head is off center, your entire body scoliosis, and you have to realign that and get your body strong again so right. it can hold itself together. Yeah, because where the head goes, the body will follow. That's right. That's yeah. right. It's a 15-pound bowling ball. You're right. <laughs> People told me my head was a little bigger than that at times. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I knew that there were alternative <coughs> therapies that had been proven and that it wasn't all just fairy dust from a bunch of new age chicken spankers, mm -hmm. which is what a lot of people think it is. It's just snake oil, you know. Right. So. Uh, yeah, you know, it's money. It's <coughs> they put so much emphasis on the controlled, double blind, placebo controlled. Exactly. Study. And it has to be published yeah. in a, in a yeah. reputable journal, right. and they can't. The medical profession's hands are tied. They just can't acknowledge it unless it's been published. Right. And how do you fake an atlas adjustment? Right. You know, difficult. <laughs> can't do a double blind study yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah it doesn't Nor would you want well. to morally. I mean, it would be immoral, yeah. all these people suffering, and you right. could help them. Yeah, you know, in chiropractic college, they actually were doing what we call sham adjustments. But the thing is, part of chiropractic and part of alternative therapy uh -huh. is that just the simple act of placing hands on somebody else right. conveys some type of healing. So that, that mm -hmm. alone is going to throw it off. Oh. So it is, yeah, and then the adjustments. Go into a placebo 
area, you mean? Well, the, you, there are ways of making them like activators so they don't oh, actually yeah. do anything. Mm -hmm. They make the, the sound or an adjustment. Well, it's not really an adjustment. If the patient doesn't know what chiropractic is, you can, mm -hmm. you can fake something. But right. it still involves hands-on. Right. And that, they were still actually getting improvement from that, which is powerful. It's a powerful tool, just mm -hmm. touching somebody. Sure. Uh, but yeah, it's difficult to do that, to tr truly do you know, a, a, mm -hmm. a sham adjustment and a, and a real one and compare them. It and do doesn't a study work well. No, yeah. no, I don't think so either. Yeah, it's very difficult. Yeah, I've yeah. had a conversation with an MD about that. And he ended up, I refuted or answered all of his questions and concerns. However, at the end of it, he said, well, you know, you have to believe this because you have a book to sell. And so he had to attack me personally because I just, he just couldn't win the discussion. Mm -hmm. right. Not that I was competing, I was trying to enlighten him, but. I just decided I wasn't going to go to the medical profession to try to enlighten them. I was going to try to spread this word through the chiropractic uh, profession, which I love you guys. <laughs> right. And um, maybe, you know, just my own book signings and talks and go to health fairs where people are really looking. In fact, I sold a couple books in a pharmacy the other day. Oh, great. Yeah, Rite Aid pharmacy manager bought one. And uh, somebody was standing there and hearing it, and she was in line to get her drugs for her fibromyalgia. And so. Wow. So you never know what will happen if wow. you just keep talking. So you also, in your book, you outline other therapies that, you, you know, you, from the nutritional component, right, I have exercise, Oh, stretching. yes, it takes just all maybe of talk it. about the Okay, the well, I use myself as a case study, and mm -hmm. I found out what worked and what didn't work and so forth and so on. And, and I really learned through experience what order to put them in. You, you start with your upper alignment and going to an upper cervical chiropractor, which you can find anywhere. Um, there's NUCA, the National Upper Cervical Chiropractic Association. There's the ICA, the International Chiropractic Association. You can go on their websites and they can locate an upper cervical chiropractor in your area. And also it's, it's important to get energetic support. And so I, for that, I went to a licensed chiropractor who is also um, internationally trained as a um, constitutional homeopath. So I am on a classic constitutional homeopathic remedy that helps with my energy and keeps my body, um, it triggers your body to heal itself in specific ways and it keeps me going and healing and, and strong. And, and I used a warm water pool therapy for three years. In fact, I was so weak when I got in the water when I got up to here. And you're talking to a classically trained singer who has an iron diaphragm. I couldn't breathe in the water because my body was pressure. too weak to push out against the water pressure, so I've come a long way. And I used that and, and Tai Chi and restorative yoga and then certainly nutritional therapy, psychotherapy to really learn um, stress reduction. Hmm. And um, So how did you wade your way through the nutritional pool ocean that's out there? Oh. Did you have a, you had a naturopath that helped you with that? Well, I think it was mostly my own research. I, I needed to find things uh, that would help me produce energy and boost my immune system. And so those are the things I have outlined in my book. And I also talk about diet. And I have the glycemics in the, uh, glycemic index in there and, and the cholesterol-lowering diet in there. Um, and also I, I refer to the hypoglycemia diet. All those things uh, make you stronger, get you in a better position to to produce energy and keep your energy levels um, more even. Was it a lot of trial and error? Uh, some error, a lot of trial. <laughs> 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 but I found that you can buy very nice, an, a nice a supply of a variation of um, vitamins and supplements at you know a two for one sales at your local pharmacy is where I usually get mine. You know, people can really afford to do this for themselves. It's not that you have to go to a health food store, which I don't, I don't, I go to health food stores and I buy things there all the time too. But if you have very limited funds, you know, take advantage of those specials. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, start, start yourself on a nice nutritional supplement protocol as well as a nutritional diet. Yeah. So it's a combination of those things and it's a, you've got to hit it from all sides because yeah, your cool. entire body is degenerated and, and atrophied. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great point. Yeah. In your book, you also you cover uh, the psychological component to this. Be, uh, That's you know, an interesting one. So yeah. um, how does that fit in with this? Well, the reason I put my first three chapters um, uh, into the realm of the psychological tools 
that, you, that one would need is because this disease, I call it really a disorder because something's simply out of order, um, lives in the central nervous system. And every kind of stress that you can think of, um, environmental, uh, psychological, external and internal psychological stress, um, physical stress, any kind of stress will make this condition worse. So I gave the first three chapters um, devoted to providing tools for people to first um, understand the dysfunction in your life, become more compassionate and understanding about the people in your life. And it's a lot about relationships. It's about, about healthy relationships, relationships, right? And and actually trying to get a loving distance between you and the people in your life who are not very healthy and that do create unnecessary stress for you. And one of the sections is on boundaries to give you tools to do that, and another is on authentic forgiveness, because forgiveness is something that you do for yourself. It's to heal the heart of the forgiver. It doesn't absolve the any offender of their responsibility. So in other words, you don't go back for more abuse when you forgive somebody for abusing you. So it's, it's to, to find a healthy balance with your relationships and pick and choose who you can really have in your life while you're healing your condition and just tell people, you know, I'm not going to be that available or whatever and I need to kind of keep to myself or I had to do a little bit more drastic measures with a, a few people in my immediate family, for instance, but, but I was able to uh, get some control over the stress in my life that way and that enabled me to, to heal this condition. Um, but fibromyalgia, you must remember, creates its own stress, terrible stress, and so you just, you have to try to keep excess stress away from you. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. So you, what's nice about the book is that you're not just naming the problems, but solutions or techniques and strategies right. to mm -hmm. address right, right. these issues. And become more realistic about, you know, what you can expect from people and from yourself and in, and in educating yourself in these ways you can r learn to forgive and understand yourself too which is also important that's correct and it's about uh, resolving past issues being in the here and now focusing on healing yourself and trying to uh, keep your own psychological balance in tune mm -hmm. you know and keep aware of the thoughts that you're thinking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those thoughts those you know thoughts. yeah <laughs> yeah would you say that in order to really handle this, you have to address all the different factors associated with it. You know, like, for instance, you can't just address managing the pain, or you can't just do it nutritionally, or, or doing no, it just no, through no, you, how you think. Right, you right. have to, you can't. It's a full. It's a full, holistic approach. And uh, a lot of people will take their primary symptom that's presented, like maybe they don't have as much pain, but they have so much fatigue that they go to somebody that can try to help them with the fatigue, or if they have pain, they go to somebody that can help them with the pain, or if they have one of the big symptoms with this is um, gastrointestinal disorders. Irritable bowel syndrome is one of the big ones, and, and you'll go to a doctor for that specialty. And there you get it sucked into the system, and all the testing, and the treatment for that one thing, and then that sets everything else off. Or they'll think it's a thyroid problem, and they'll treat you with thyroid pro you know, drugs, or one thing after another. Whatever your primary symptom is, is usually the one that people go to the specialist in the medical profession to address. And, but that right. doesn't get them anywhere near the cause. Mm -hmm. That's still treating, uh, still trying to put a band-aid over the oil light, right. treating an effect instead of the cause. I wonder how many people are willing to do everything it would take. That's a question I ask in my book. What kind of a patient are you? There's basically three types of patients. Somebody that gets a, a secondary gain out of mm -hmm. the illness because they don't have as many responsibilities, they can get more attention, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Somebody that just doesn't want to think about it, they want to go to the doctor and hope the medicine doesn't taste too bad. And then there's the person that's like me that wants to take charge, educate themselves, and start taking control and making choices that yeah. benefit them. That's fabulous, yes. <sighs> We have about two minutes left. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Went by fast. Time flies. Do you have any advice for people out there suffering uh, with fibromyalgia, other than getting this book, getting which is book. called <laughs> "I'm Going the Wrong Way: Curing from Fibromyalgia"? 
choosing and what works. Choosing what works. Uh -huh. It's fi thefibrocure.com. Right, it's www.thefibrocure.com. And you can get the book direct from my publisher. You can get it on okay. Amazon. It has a five-star Amazon review. It has all the high-value endorsements that I could ever possibly want from NUCA, the ICA, and the IMA, and, and that's the Massage Association, by the way. <laughs> and, um, and I would say to definitely find an upper cervical chiropractor and get your atlas properly x-rayed and have your spine aligned. Because first of all, you, you align the atlas, but you have to address the, the cervical myopathy that creates the problems with the brachial plexus that that, that creates, that, that create, um, you know, the uh, carpal tunnel syndrome and all the other things that happen. The restless leg is from your, your body being out of kilter and one of your hips being constricted more than the other. You have to address all those problems, a full alignment of the body. And then you need to, to go ahead and, and uh, supplement that with the remainder of the protocol. It took me four years to get well. But considering the alternative, I'm 61 now. Yeah. And I'm healthier in many ways than I've ever been in my life, certainly psychologically. And I'm getting my total strength back. I was an athlete all my life. And I'm very busy and uh, doing everything that I think I could possibly do, even if I hadn't been sick before. That's great. And you're back to training. I'm training again, and I'm singing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fabulous. In five languages. Wow. That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I have a wonderful teacher, Mr. Wow. Garland Andrews. He's a grandmaster, a former baritone and, and, and composer and, and uh, conductor. Okay. So. Well, Valerie, thank you for being a guest on thank the Thank you Your for Health having me. Television program. Appreciate your expertise and your experience and sure. everything you shared with the viewers. Great. Great.